Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. This is another video in our Divi for Beginners series and today we're going to be looking at rows, sections and columns. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new page. I'm going to go up here to new, I'm going to hit page. We'll give it a name and let's use the Divi Builder. We're going to build from scratch today. As soon as you start a new page, it puts in a section for you we've got here and asks you to insert a row. And in the row structure here, you've got various different column structures that you can use here. Pop in whichever one you want. Once you put a row in, it'll prompt you to put a little module in there. I'll just throw a call to action in there. OK, well, let's just save that. At the moment, we've got a section. A section is always a blue tab. Let's color this section blue so you know what's going on here. With all of these, hit the cog to go inside. You'll always find background and colors under the content tab there. And we've done a whole video on all the various background styles you can have there. So let's make this blue for a section. I'm gonna go into the row, the green tab for the row. Again, just hit the little cog. And let's make this green for the row. Content, background, color. Let's find a different green. Not too keen on that default green. Let's just use this one. And you can see a little bit of the green sticking out there behind the module. Now that's called padding and I'll show you that setting in a moment. Great. So we've got a section, the blue tab. We've got our row, the green tab, and we've got our module, that little blue call to action inside there. Now, each of these, if we go into our section, they have common settings. You always get, like we said earlier, you're always going to find background under content. And if you want to link the section somewhere, you've got a link there. Design wise, you've got all the same things in sections, rows, and modules. Obviously, some modules have extra elements. We look under the design tab for the layout. You can choose whether to show an inner or outer shadow there. With sections, you can actually use dividers and I'll be doing a whole module on dividers. You can get some wonderful effect. Dividers are basically things you could put at the top and the bottom of your section to make them flow easily into the next section. So perhaps I've got that black bar on the bottom there. If we were to put a, a little black divider on the bottom, if I select the bottom tab, go down, choose a slider style there. It adds it. Now, if I add that black color to it, it merges in with a black, black color down below there. And there's many different styles to choose from here. I'm going to take that away. We're not going to do dividers today. Like I say, I'll do a whole video on dividers and show you how you can animate them and things like that. If we close down dividers, next down you've got sizing. And you can actually give things a fixed width. At the moment it's auto, so it's going to spread to all of the available content, the available area there. If you wanted to make it half the, the width, or say three quarters of the width, I'm going to put 75% in there. And you can see that section has shrunk to 75% of the width. And you can align it in the middle if you want to. You can also use a pixel value. Let's use 960px for pixels. And you can also use what they call viewable width, VW. So you can decide how much a percentage of the screen it wants to take up. So let's say 70VW. It's taking up 70% of the viewable width there. Great. And as with all things Divi, if you don't like something you've done, select it, delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. You can set a max width, which means it can't get any wider than whatever value you put in there. We've had a look at alignment. If you change size, you can align it how you want. We can do exactly the same for the height. Minimum height means it can't get any smaller than. Regular height. Again, we can do a pixel value, a percentage, or we can do VH for viewable height. If I wanted this to take up half of the screen, I could say 
50 VH. You can also use percentage values. And of course, pixels. Let's say 500 pixels. PX. There you go. And again, just delete it if you don't like it. Max height means it can't get any bigger than whatever value you put in there. That sizing, we use that quite a lot, especially for hover effects and putting things on top of each other. Next down is spacing, really important. This is important to all modules. We're actually in this section, but like I said before, most rows, columns, and modules will have these settings in them also. Now we'll do a whole video on margin and padding. I'll go through it briefly here. Margin puts space outside of an element. For instance, let's use this blue section here. If I put a margin of 100 pixels at the top, just put in 100, I'll put in the pix. It pushes it down by 100 pixels and you can see the behind behind it. So it's actually putting space between there and there. Padding is different. Padding is going to put it on the inside. And the way I like to think of it is think of it, you're sending a package to somebody. The section, the outside of the section is the box you're sending it in. And the padding is the bubble wrap you put between the section and the thing you're trying to protect inside our row in this case. So if I put 100 pixels in there, it'll add 100 pixels to the interior of our box or our little section there. So let's put 100 in there. And we've got it. And there's always a little chain next door. If you want the opposite side, the bottom in this case, to have the same value, just click the little chain. And it's the same for left and right. Let's put 50 in there. We'll put 50 each side. Just to let you know what's going on a bit more, let's do this with the row, the green section there. If we go into the row, green tab for the row, design. Again, you're going to find all those things that we had in the section. Here's the spacing. If I add 100 pixels top and bottom, you'll see that green bar grow. Here's the top. Hit the chain, it'll do the bottom. If you want to put some padding left and right of it, Put your value in there, hit your chain. We've got 50 either side. Now, another thing to know about margin is you can actually have negative values. You can't have negative values with padding, but you can with margin. Okay, we're in the row at the moment, the green little oblong there. If I give it a negative margin on top of negative 100 picks, it'll pull that up by 100 picks. So let's do that. So we'll put in the minus sign, 100 px. And as you can see, it's pulled that whole green section up by 100. And you can move things left or right and stack them on top of each other. If I copy that value and put it on the left-hand side, it'll pull it 100 picks to the left there. And again, if you don't like what you've done, simply delete things and they'll go back to normal. Okay, once you've got a little layout in place there, if you decide, well, this is okay, but I want to add an image over here, you can change the structure. Each row, the green tab, has this little icon in it. There you can change the column structure and add or take away columns to your heart's desire. Let's split this into two. And perhaps put an image in next door or something like that. Pop in whichever one you want. When you're happy, save your changes. So there's a little brief overview of sections, rows, and columns within a row. And once you've got columns within a row, you can actually go into the row, the green tab again. You can go into each of those columns. And each of those columns, they've got the column, the link, and the background of the admin label under content. Design, we've got our spacing, border, box shadow, filters, transform animation and just to show you we'll say that we're back into the row now which is this green box here back into the design there we've done the spacing you can add a board around it you can make it rounded corners if you've got the little chain check there it'll do all four corners at once simply type in a pixel value up there the higher the value the more rounded the corners will be if you take the chain away you can get some crazy shapes by doing corners individually
and you see a lot of these sort of abstract sort of shapes on the side. And again, if you don't like something, delete it. It'll go back to how it was. Hit the chain, select one of them, and they'll all go back for you. Now, if you actually want to add a physical border, we can go down. You can add all four sides at once, top, right, bottom, and left. Just select how wide you want it, say two pixels. Put a black one in by default. Put in the color that you want your border to be, and you're good to go. There's various different styles, and we did this with backgrounds and things. Solid, dashed, dotted, etc. Down below that, we've got a box shadow. And you can lift it off a page by giving it a little box shadow like that. And like I say, these settings are common to all rows, sections, columns, and modules. Down below, we've got filters. That's great for getting crazy effects. You obviously affects the colors of everything. Saturation is the amount of color. Brightness is brightness, obviously. Contrast, the difference between the blacks and the whites. Invert, you can invert the colors if you want to. If I flip this the other way, they go to opposites or negatives. CP is for oldie, worldy sort of effects. Old photograph type effect. Opacity is one we use great for hover effects. And that makes it sort of transparent or shows you what's behind it the more you take it down the more invisible it gets the more you bring it up the more solid it, it appears blur like me with out my glasses blend mode you can blend images and pictures and things like that in backgrounds and we covered that in our background video so there you go guys there's a brief overview of how to set up and manipulate your sections your rows your columns and your module. Once you've done all your edits, make sure to save your changes, little purple button down at the bottom. Save draft or publish if you're ready. If you haven't already published a page, you'll have save draft and publish. Once you've published a page and it's live on the site, you'll no longer have save draft. It will just say save down there. I'm going to save mine as a draft. And let's exit the visual builder. And there we go. We've got a little section. It's got a hundred pixels margin at the top, hundred pixels padding inside then we've got our little row green section with two columns and a couple of little modules in there don't forget if you have any questions pop them below the video i'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesigndetectives.com thanks for watching have a great day <laughs>